Well, kind of in keeping with, uh, I thought this was appropriate now that uh, the LA Fish guy, Jim Stein, is uh, doing a, a video cleaning up his tank. I figured I'd go ahead and clean up this tank. I let this uh, algae grow, or the, the glass grow for probably two months before, uh, uh, between cleanings. So I'm going to bring you a little video tour of how it looks right now. We'll do a video before and after. Um, lots of coralline, lots of kind of a gooey slime buildup. Um, I have scraped this a little bit once with the mag float here. This is my DIY frag rack that is uh, very well overloaded and uh, tends to grab onto a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, just the coralline is the main thing. What I do here when I do this cleaning every couple months is I hook up my old trusty Marineland Magnum 330 from uh, circa 1987, I believe, 88. And, uh, and then I go through and clean up all the glass. I run that. And also, if you can see in here, I don't know if you can, probably can. My power heads are quite gooey. Um, lots of stuff growing on them. Um, all three of them. If you can even see in there to see them where they are. And uh, they're all just kind of slimy. I'm going to also... If I get a chance, I'm going to take out that bird's nest and throw it away. Try to shake off all of the uh, the buddies that I can, all the starfish and everything. But uh, I set up the tripod here, and uh, what I use, I'm going to turn the pop the filter on. I burp the air out of it. Doesn't always work, and it's it's a little slow to start up nowadays, but it gets going. Then what I do is I use my mag float with the razor uh, blade attachment on it that I get from Bulk Reef Supply, real slick. And you might hear some kids running around here, ask me what I'm doing here in about two minutes. And uh, make sure that the screw is down tight, but not too tight. I'll get my mag float on. And then we go to town. And obviously, you got to stir up a whole lot of junk doing this. So, but here I'm going to bring this in closer so you can see how effective this uh, razor blade uh, mag float is. Of course, this wouldn't work on an acrylic tank. And here come the boys. Must be bored playing that from playing the iPad. I try to get a uh, kind of a section going over here where I don't have to. I can run over clean glass with the uh, with the pat or with the uh, scraper part of the mag float. I'm also going to do some rearranging here of the tank, I believe. I um, really would like to get most of the stuff that's not mine out of here. Most of the stuff that's in here is actually from a guy who had to move out of his house suddenly back in April of last year. Uh, it is now August, so it's been a while. But it's alright. I've been able to enjoy some, some nice corals in here and have a tank with some life in it that uh, can kind of you know use to gauge how well everything's going and let's see here. So as you can see it just pretty much makes mincemeat of this uh, coralline algae 
I'm trying not to move the snails too much because they tend to fall down and then not right themselves and then they die. Alright, so that's what it looks like after scraping. And I'll just continue on here. The other half. This half's much easier because it's shaded by the frag rack. In doing this, I've noticed that there is a lot of life around this uh, this upper frag rack here, including what looks like some baby Nasaria, uh, Nasarius snails, which I had always heard um, were very difficult to uh, breed without a uh, like a freshwater kind of a salinity wave pool, I guess you'd say, for lack of a better term, something that provides a uh, lower salinity level and kind of a tight, like a surge type of tide pool or something like that. Uh, I just read that somewhere. But it seems to be the only tank where I have successfully had these snails. Uh, you can see one right here. Uh, maybe you can see it. It's right there. There's another one right there. Uh, there's another one there and there. And uh, so that you just, I don't know what they hide under the frag rack into that low flow area or, or what, but. Oh, I'm gonna, you know, take all that stuff off because I'm kind of tired of looking at it. Oh, there's a couple zinnias. Darn. Really like those pulsing zinnia. Oh, see, now they stayed on. That's good. At least didn't decimate the population. Alright, so now my frag rack looks a lot better. If I can get it to raise up without making it fall off. This is always tricky. I really need to redo this. Maybe make one that's just acrylic. Um, You, one that just hangs off the edge of the tank. Uh, I'm not a big fan of magnets for this reason right here is that you're, it is so easy to accidentally dislodge a magnet and then your frag rack is toast. It just falls to the ground, falls to the bottom of the tank um, and you got a huge mess on your hands. So, anyways, oh, the snails have moved. Over there. No. Okay. Now I'll get to this side. Very careful around the seals. Put the razor blade right up, right up along them, without getting under them. Not always very really easy to do. My tank stand is not uh, really, it's your basic stand. Uh, it's from the Reef Central 
DIY stand calculator. Um, and uh, if I go back and forth like this too fast, I mean, you can see what I was saying there, but if I go back and forth this way, scraping the glass, uh, it rocks the tank. And I just don't like that. So I have to go, oops, there goes the sound. Uh, I just have to go really slow or just choose mainly up and down, which doesn't really work too well. We've got some more of those baby Nasarius snails over here. You just heard me and you go, oop, I uh, accidentally ran the razor blade right up over the seal. But I think it came up over the top of some uh, coralline algae. So we're all right there. If we're not, we're going to find out real fast. Okay, now back over to the other side over here. That's one of my dogs. The miniature dachshund, or as you would probably be referred to called, super huge dog. You might notice here I've got a clamp sitting in front of me. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, I originally set this tank up with the stand uh, not in full contact with the tank, and the tank started to separate along this seam. So instead of buying a new tank, I fixed the stand and put a clamp on the tank. Um, I just don't take it off because I don't trust it. I think the tank has been damaged to the point where it should have been replaced. We're taken apart um, and uh, resealed, and I said no to that. Uh, especially considering that it already had uh, several hundred pounds of live rock and, uh, and the corals in it that were not mine. Um, that was from the dentist's office tank that cracked. And that's actually the reason I went ahead and set, set the tank and made a really quick stand. Uh, it was not the, I mean, it, it, this stand is good. It just, I didn't, I had a problem with the floor. The floor is uh, not level, to say it nicely. Um, they put jack posts up underneath here. There's jack posts directly underneath this tank, actually. Uh, but it's kind of in the middle. And what happened was um, the floor goes like this. So right about here in the tank is a jack post, and it goes a quarter inch down the floor on either side. So I was too concentrated on the floor contact, the stand in contact with the floor being level and nice than I was with the tank being in contact with the stand. And the tank was actually floating on all four corners, so it was only it was not being supported by the corners which is actually what you're supposed to do, is support the tank by a corners. If it's four feet long, you can support it six inches from each corner and uh, get away with it. Um, and I did the opposite. <laughs> so, learn that the hard way. All right, that's about all I'm gonna do, because I don't want to take the, take the, the, uh, the clamp off. So I'm gonna leave, well, Take that back. Oh, I just sliced into the uh, seal there. Just 
still okay. Just kind of got the razor blade sideways and went right into the uh, silicone seal. But I'm going to get up over the clamp. If I do this right. And. Get most of this algae scraped off up here. This video is probably getting very long. I'm sure you fast forwarded a couple times because it's really not that much that exciting to see this much crap come off a tank. it for scraping I think. So then what I do with this, it's really nice because it comes apart. Just take the razor blade out. Right there. Rinse it off. Fresh water. And uh, give it a good uh, let it dry, dry it out, let it air dry real good. And get back to that. So now, as you can see, there is a nice whirlwind of junk flying around in there. It's not too bad, actually. Some fish are kind of pissed off about it. That is not my cell phone tang either. I'm just holding on to that for somebody who had a tank crack also. Uh, I bought that rock from him. Covered in all kinds of good stuff. I did buy the bird's nest from him. I didn't pay much for it, so I'm not too depressed. Uh, that one I bought from him as well. That I got it at, uh, oh, I got it from somebody. Can't even remember who now. Um, Fox Pond. Um, hammer, not doing so hot. Uh, those I got, this I got at Spring Fest, Spring Fest, that's a Spring Fest coral. So it's that one, that one. That one I got in Macna. That one I got from somebody, and it's some, some green things growing on it, not sure what it is. Uh, that one I got at Macna, Purple People Eater. That's a, uh, ne uh that's a, uh, nuclear green polyzoa. Uh, there's a pink cyphostrea. Been kind of struggling with that guy. Uh, here's another one I got at Springfest. That's another one from Springfest. It's a deep water SPS. This is Zoa from Springfest. Bam Bam. Got that from someone in the club at the Spring Festival. That one's from Macna. Um, Springfest, 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 Springfest. And, uh, you know, you get those anywhere. Green Digis. Uh, and then those uh, vertically uh, encrusting Montes. Everything else in here, uh, well, some of those ones back there. Of course, the big guy, this is some. This is from another guy's tank. This is from the guy I mentioned before. Some of those. Uh, and those. And in here, hard to see, right about there, is a Recordia that is completely covered by these, uh, these, uh, Anthelia, which I'm just going to cut away with the scissors. Um, and there's a whole rock that's covered with them. Uh, also, this one I got from somebody, I can't remember who. That one I got at a drawing in Christmas time. His polyps are not out, he's been kind of struggling. But I got to I got to clean off the cyano off of this uh, frag rack somehow. Get rid of some nuisance corals all over the back wall as well. Of course there are some eggs on the wall over there too. There are all kinds of eggs on the wall now that I can see the wall. See up there? So yeah, now you can see the power heads. You can't really see that one back in there. It's just kind of a mess now. But I'm going to take those, I'm going to soak them in vinegar and uh, get them all cleaned up. And the next video I take, hopefully I will have all of the anthelia out, the bird's nest out. I'll have this frag rack moved somewhere else 
happens because what happens is this guy comes forward really hard and, and shades this entire area of the tank. This entire area here gets no light, which I think is one of the reasons why those aren't opened up. So you can see the other frog sponge opened up. The other uh, hammer is not, but anyway. Till next time.